This is Dr. Mimi Lam, and I'm a renal physician at Metro Health. I will be explaining the concept of the anion gap, what it is, and how we use it. In serum, the number of positive charges equals the number of negative ones. The positives consist primarily of sodium, with everything else being lumped together as unmeasured cations, a conglomeration of potassium, calcium, magnesium, etc. The negatives consist of chloride, bicarbonate, and unmeasured anions, which include proteins, especially albumin, phosphates, and sulfates. Ordinarily, the unmeasured anions in the serum exceed unmeasured cations by a concentration of about 10 milliequivalents per liter, the so-called anion gap. Note that although we can't directly measure the concentrations of miscellaneous anions or cations, we can calculate the size of the gap by subtracting the sum of the concentrations of chloride and bicarbonate from the concentration of sodium to give an anion gap of approximately 10 milliequivalents per liter. The anion gap is useful in determining the cause of a metabolic acidosis. In a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, bicarbonate is lost directly from the body, for instance via diarrhea or renal tubular acidosis with impaired bicarbonate reabsorption. Serum bicarbonate concentration decreases, serum chloride increases to compensate, and the anion gap remains normal, about 10 milliequivalents per liter. In an elevated anion gap metabolic acidosis, an abnormally large amount of an organic acid such as lactate or keto acid is generated. The acid dissociates into hydrogen ion, which combines with bicarbonate, reducing its concentration, while the anion, lactate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, or whatever, is added to the unmeasured anions in the serum. Calculation of the anion gap now yields a high value, serving as a clue to the presence of an abnormal amount of an organic acid. These acids may be generated, for instance, in a hypoxic state producing lactic acid, with uncontrolled diabetes producing keto acids, with uremia allowing the accumulation of phosphates, sulfates, and other miscellaneous acids, or with the toxic ingestion with aspirin, methanol, or ethylene glycol, each of which is metabolized to an organic acid. So, when we see a patient with a metabolic acidosis and are searching for its cause, calculation of the anion gap helps to point us in the right direction and makes our detective work a little easier.